Hi, so I wanted to make an update on my sleep disorder, I guess. And so last time I showed you this graph, I guess I can uh, reiterate for new people that don't have an idea what is going on here. So this is like number of days that I'm logging my, basically this is wake up time and uh, this is hours. So each day I wake up a little bit later than previous day and and this came up to about thousand hours in like two years. <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, this is probably when I was at the time of the recording. So I was able to gain some control over this condition, but I mean, as you can see, it's going up still, which is not not really good. I mean, this uh, one tick in this graph is, is two weeks, so you can see that so you can control this for like two weeks, uh, I would say normally, apart from this period, which I don't quite remember. And there may have been some mistake, like this should have been, uh, this should have been going up here. And so this, anyway, any, anyway, it doesn't really matter. So what was I doing basically? I, I was, uh, I was experimenting with how melatonin works and how it helps, and it helps a lot actually. It was probably solely, solely responsible for me to be able to gain any control over this. Then I experimented with extract of valerian root, and here I was using it, I mean I was using it previously as well, so statistically, or I, I mean, does it work or does it not? I don't quite think so. so now this valerian root extract, this simple extract with isopropanol and uh, one dose would correspond to like 10 grams of dry plant material, so it's quite strong extract. Now there is about one year missing from this graph because I stopped recording any data here, like 16th December 2022, because I was like this is getting nowhere and Anyway, so other thing that I have done is I went to a neurologist and this is, uh, he has speciali specialization in sleep disorders. So it went like this. I presented him this data that I have gathered and he dismissed it with words that I don't quite understand this and it would be best to get our own data. So they gave me like variable actigraph thingy that like records my motion basically so they can distinguish when I'm awake and when I'm not. So this was collected for a period of three weeks. So <laughs> three weeks, I mean, if, it's one and a half tick of this. So like if, if you would record this, you would know, you wouldn't know anything, but I wasn't able to maintain like normal cycle for this period of time. So they would collect something, but yeah, a anyway. So I also got some uh, paper log that I collected some data and it was so terribly made. I mean, the cell was absolutely misaligned and the sun Sundays were missing completely from this paper. So yeah, whatever. I, I, I improvised a little bit, so. Now when I returned this actigraph to them, I was supposed to get to an appointment, but kinda sorta did not uh, understand that correctly and like did not do it. So I was like, well, I will wait for results. And <laughs> the guys, the guys turn uh, turn around time was like six months. When you ask them to sub for something, you wait like six months for the answer. So I, I waited for a year. And after that, I asked them like, what's up? And they said to me, well, you were supposed to be there and I wasn't. So that's my fault, I guess. But uh, still, I was there. Uh, I was in the like capital city. So like their main branch where they have like most uh, technology to work with. And the, there was a woman that said to me, listen, this is just a matter of habit. So I was like, nah, I don't know, man. But I was speaking with a uh, like, local doctor with, from the same company and I showed, them, uh, I showed him some articles and these were pretty much dismissed like, okay, okay, fine. Because I asked for, for a prescription for sodium valproate and 
And he was like, uh, nope. So I was like, fine. So I looked for sodium salt of 2-propyl pentanoic acid, which is just sodium valproate. I bought 15 grams without issues. I, I don't... I'm not going to tell you where I got it because I don't want to interfere with uh, this kind of business. I mean, <laughs> but uh, every big chemical company should have it. So I started experimenting a little bit. All right, so let me tell you about that. So my goal was to basically reproduce one uh, one paper that I link in the description. I've shown it in last video, but anyway. So what I've done is I started with those with 100, 100 milligrams each evening. And this was during synchronous period, so I mean, I would know nothing about what is happening with me apart from I was expecting bad side effects. However, <laughs> well, this may be a little bit, a um, little bit frightening, I guess. I got good side effects for first two doses. I got sudden clarity in overall mood and subtle feelings. If you would ask me how am I doing, if I tried to express it, it would be just grayness. After this, uh, after first dose, I was like, oh, there are some, there are some red and blue and yellow and, and, and stuff. And anyway, so I started having dreams again, which I normally I do have one dream in like six months or something like that. So this was interesting. But apart from this, I observed pretty much nothing. In any case, I did some blood test. Uh, my goal is to get to level of five milligrams per liter, lower dose to 50 milligrams. So after two weeks, the desynchronization of my sleep cycle with a daytime should start. And indeed, it quite started. So the falling asleep got more difficult, but there is no need for that. It works for me very well, so I just use that. Interesting thing is that I stopped to be able to sleep without pillow, which I was never able to sleep with pillow. So anyway... If I tried to sleep without pillow, I would start feeling uncontrollable urge to move my legs, which I know that this is uh, like disorder on its own, but let's leave it like this for now. The quote-unquote sleep paralysis also returned, but it is much, 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 much milder than usual. Normally, if I would try to keep my sleep cycle in sync with the day, basically, I wouldn't be able to wake up for like two hours even while my alarm clock is like screaming at me but now this quote-unquote paralysis lasts only like five to ten minutes maximum but the thing is that since the duration of this quote-unquote paralysis is so short i can uh, a remember it and b i can analyze it and since i'm awake actually i can try to do stuff so man this is so funny. This is this is like lucid dreaming. I mean, you wake up, you hear the alarm clock, and I was like, okay, 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 now do something, do something, do something. So now, what am I going to do? Okay, let's try to move your arm. So I, I was like, okay, I can move it 10 centimeters, and then suddenly stops. Like, it's like as if I don't have any power. Now, the weird thing is that this kind of happens with my eyes as well. So it's like I point them somewhere, and they don't stay there. It's like they want to roll back into my head or something like that. Like, I, I'm not sure if I can describe it quite well, but it's weird. Anyway, at this point, the sleep cycle is quite steady. After three weeks, I, di I did another blood test and uh, the valve rate is relatively high. I mean, it's within tolerance, but uh, I started to take it in the morning instead. At this point, I remember, wait a second, Developeric acid is quite toxic to you, mainly to your liver and to your brain. So I was like, okay, let's do more tests uh, to cover this. So they look fine. I mean, they don't test ammonia, so this is uric acid. And I don't think there is metabolic pathway from ammonia to uric acid, but I mean, this is closest I can find. So anyway. And this is one thing that I forgot. When I got to the blood test, when I woke up, I got a paralysis event and I was feeling quite miserable in the morning. So I was like, yeah, fuck it, let's do cortisol. And uh, this is this is normal. So I was like, okay, well, this is not explaining anything. After about four weeks, I noticed that when I forget to take uh, Valpreg acid, the day is almost next day is guaranteed almost to be free from paralysis so 
I was like, okay, let's assume this is from the high level of Valproic Acid. So let's reduce the dosage to 50 milligrams every two days. Now, subjectively, I would say that the paralysis frequency improved greatly. It happens maybe two times per week with duration less than one minute. If you would ask me, this is pretty much perfect. Sleep cycle is still steady, but daytime sleepiness has appeared. And this would happen with frequency about two times per week. So after about eight weeks, I took another blood test and this time it was done after 48 hours from the dose. And the concentration is pretty much immeasurable. This is the supplementary test. I forgot to specify more tests that I want, but yeah, anyway, there are some elevated values for the liver, but I mean, uh, this is fine. Could be because I ate some food before I did the tests, which I should not do. So I will need more tests. So at this point, I am enjoying my now normal life. And I was like, okay, is, the, is there anything that is bothering me still? I mean, the most problematic thing is still the sleep paralysis, because it is very annoying still. Unfortunately, the clinic that is doing the blood tests does not test for a lot of hormones that I would like to, I guess, measure. And also I would need to do the blood draw immediately after I woke up, so I would have to do it myself. They were not too enthused about that idea, so I was like, okay, so what's the next best thing? And I was like, let's get a pulse oximeter and let's check some vitals, I guess. Anyway, at this point sleep cycle is steady and daytime sleepiness may happen still with frequency at about two times per week. Probably the paralysis and stuff like that still stay at that frequency. So data from these two months basically I was reading from a text file, this is a log, and it is very subjective. I mean, I mean you cannot be subjective pretty much because it is just your feelings pretty much so but i wanted to bring some objectivity into it and i created a sheet that is a scoring sheet basically you print this on an a4 paper you can assign some scale to these values and you can uh, you can log this daily pretty much so you can see this from like february to like march next year so yeah this this seems, this seems fine to me. Much better than what my neurologist gave me. Now, so far I've got like three weeks of data and this is supposed to look like four mini graphs that you, you can like look from the distance and see some trend maybe. But honestly, I don't see any trend. Like, um, now the most important metric for me is the paralysis intensity, which is basically defined by time, so this is my very subjective scale. It is measurable for the paralysis intensity because like you will see how long the alarm clock is going on for. Yeah, basically anything above number two is quite severe case for me. So I was like, okay, I can, I can, I can see that there are not many of these cases, but there are quite a bit. A anyway, the sleep once at time, I mean, I was using, uh, I guess rhythmic, rhythmical breathing or s how, how do you call it's like esoteric technique to like do stuff but uh, I was using that to aid me going to sleep because I can basically you can jump to hypnagogic state and from there you can go to sleep if you want so I was using that and involve some counting, briefing at specific frequency and A times B is C and so you can tell how much time you needed to fall asleep. So, but this is now mostly subjective because I don't do that now. Now the sleep quality, it's kind of objective. Like the point the system I'm using is, did you wake up during your sleep? That is point subtracted. Did you wake up twice? That is two points subtracted. Did you like feel like shit? during your sleep like like excessive sweating or it was it was insanely hot and or or i mean, i don't know if you piss yourself i guess that is like three points subtracted so something like that and uh, and number one is basically you died during sleep so 
Similar metric is for daytime sleep, like no daytime sleepiness at all, it's number one. Did you feel like urge to close your eyes? That's number two. Did you actually close your eyes and fall asleep? That's number three. Did this happen twice? It's number four. Number five is you basically are a zombie. Now, another thing that I've noticed is that doctors love actigraphs for whatever reason, but uh, I have created script that converts a um, log like this, which is automatically generated. Now, this is incidentally created from this graph and it has more pages, basically. The idea is that uh, this is the day, basically, this is the hour of the day and basically each day there is some offset for me, I guess. When I got some control, it looks like this. So normal people would look like this, I guess. And right now it looks like this. So there are some events like this is uh, New Year's like celebrations. I think I forgot my phone in my car this day, so there was no alarm clock for me. Anyway, so then I compensated a little bit. I, I it was problematic, but I managed. I mean, not a big deal, really. I have a GitHub repository for this. It's simple stuff, pretty much. Like, well, it has some assumptions there. Like, there is like, you need to specify path to the file and you can scale the grass. So you can do fun stuff with it. And yeah, it's otherwise pretty simple stuff does not really need like much libraries at all. Basically Peel is one thing that you have to install. NumPy maybe, if you don't have NumPy or NumPy, whatever. Now to summarize, look at this. I said that I don't remember this, but let's assume this happened. This is new data. It is not that much longer. So the thing is, I would like to say that the Valproid definitely helped me but there are still symptoms of, of my condition that are much milder that, than they would normally be. However, in previous video, I also mentioned that for some reason I did switch jobs for a few times and I was able to keep cycle like this for some time, definitely like some three-ish months. And over this time, the symptoms got worse and worse and worse. And coincidentally, I did change my jobs in winter, like always, like in January, I started a new job for whatever reason. I mean, it was coincidence, but I have started this experiment in December. Before this, my cycle looked like this. So there was jump pretty much from like, from something like this, like this craziness to this. But I mean, that happened here as well. And it did not last. So in conclusion, I have no conclusion. I need more time to collect more data.